I just want to get on here and talk about Brian Flores and the weakness, the weakness of the men, the melanated men of our community. I realize that there's we've done the community a, a huge disservice. Um, just think about all the stuff that the men have started that have been destructive for our community. Um, somebody mentioned about, they said, well, white people put the crack in the community. But who told you to sell it? And who told you to smoke it? What's up, baptized? Who told you to smell it? Smell it. Who told you to sell it? And who told you to smoke it? And then who told you to kill over it? You know, because we was killing to sell that crack. We was not only killing the women and making crack babies, but we was killing each other just to be able to sell the crack to the women to destroy them and then make crack babies. We did that. And then had the audacity to make music glorifying it. What's up, Navi? And then had the audacity to make some music glorifying. You know, I realized something that our men are weak. They weak. How is it that white people can put something bad in front of your face and you got to indulge in it, but when they show you something positive, you don't do it? White folks get married. Y'all don't do that. I'm speaking to the men. What's up, Mimi? White people get married. Y'all don't do that. White people start family businesses. Y'all don't do that. White people protect their communities. Y'all don't do that. So there's a lot of stuff that white people do that's positive that we don't emulate. We only seem to emulate the negative things that white people show us. So that lets me see that really we're choosing that. So I can't really blame the white people. I got it because they're giving us two choices. They're giving us two choices. We've done our community a disservice. We've done our women a disservice. We've done these children a disservice. And then out of all the stuff we've done, we have the audacity to make music that glorifies it. It's absolutely disgusting. When you just step back and look at it, it's disgusting. It's disgusting. I'm listening to Brian Flores, the former coach of the Miami uh, Dolphins, and he hollering about racism. I look at the owner do y'all know that the owner of the Miami Dolphins <clears throat> had the blackest, blackest staff in the NFL? The head coach was black, the GM was black, the assistant GM was black, and the offensive, the defensive coordinator was black. Four top positions, all black. And this man got the audacity to say this man is racist. He had the blackest staff in the NFL just for y'all to turn around and call him racist. So my question is, what is the incentive for these white folks to do right by you just for you to turn around and be woke and turn woke on them? I was disgusted. Y'all do realize that the NFL is mostly comprised of us. Not to mention how many of us are on the coaching staff, how many of us are on management, how many of us are in the front office. Like we are literally all in the NFL all over <clears throat> that's right they got paid to push a narrative and this man is up here crying because bill belichick sent the wrong tweet out which i don't believe happened but at the end of the day we all know how corporate america works we all know how corporate america works corporate america most of the interviews are done with formalities they know who they want to hire. Y'all know this. Why is the NFL any different? We all know that in corporate America, most positions are already going to be filled by who they want to fill them with. The interviews are formalities. Then he snitched on the, then he snitched on the owner of the Miami Dolphins. He snitched and said, he asked me to throw the games for 100000 a game so that we could get a, a better draft pick slot. So basically in football, you might as well lose every game if you're not gonna to go to the playoffs. 
what he does is he had three seasons. Out of his three seasons, his record was below 500. He was not a good coach. I'm sorry. He wasn't. So based on his performance, <clears throat> he should have got let go. He had three years to turn the program around, and he did. Thank you, Heather. Thank you so much. But he had three he had three years to turn the program around, and he didn't. So you're telling me he gets to keep his job because he's black or because he's successful? They're painting a narrative like, like this guy sent, sent the team and they won the Super Bowl. That's an absolute lie. They had a below 500 record under his coaching tutelage. Under his reign as head coach, they had a below 500 record. And on top of that, he threw Bill Belichick under the bus. And Bill Belichick made it to where he'd be able to be a head coach for the Miami Dolphins. So the two people that helped him out the most in his career, Bill Belichick and the owner for the Miami Dolphins, he stunted on them just to be woke. And all the folks in our community are going to run with it because we so victimized. And it's really the men, though. It's really the men pushing this. I know this because on my page, it's always the men coming on my page crying. It's never the women. I said, why is what I'm saying not offending the women? Why is what I'm saying always offending the men? Why is what I'm saying always offending the melanated man? Why? Why is it always the men? <clears throat> What's up, Mark? <clears throat> It's always the men <clears throat> being offended by what I'm saying, but I realize something. It's because the men are weak. That's why. The men are weak, and the men are weak because they lack character. How do I how do I share? You say hit the share button. How do I share? I don't know how to share. But I don't know how to share. But the men are weak. I'm not going to lie. I used to sit back and, and look at these relationship dynamics in our community. And I used to be like, wait a minute, something, something ain't right. So I look to the women and look to the men. I would hear the men's side, then I hear the women's side. <clears throat> and I say, well, you know what? The men's side is more logical than the woman's side. The woman's side is more emotional. The man's side is more logical. So naturally, I lean towards the logical man side. But now as I sit back though, I say, no, the man might be logical, but the man ain't got no character. So he may make sense, but when push comes to shove, he gonna fold like a cheap suit. So just because a man is logical, doesn't mean that he's going to be ethical and have character and morality, it's not. Most of these men out here are weak. They're sensitive. They're emotional. Let me tell you my four, my four destructive pillars for the black community. Number one is that black people on a whole are too emotional. Number one, number two, black men suffer from arrested development. They don't want to grow up. Number three, black women lack humility. And number four, the ch black children lack an identity. Now we all know that we are not really black. We are not really black, but I'm using black in terms, especially because it's Black History Month, as you all understand what I'm saying. But our people suffer from those four pillars. That is too emotional. The men suffer from arrested development. The women suffer from lack of humility and the children suffer from lack of identity. Now, the problem is all of those four pillars may be present in all in, in one group. Every group has a bit of all those things in it. It's just one group has a dominant one. And for the men, it's arrested development. That means the men don't want to grow up. So why don't the men in our community want to grow up? I'll tell you, because the propaganda in our community is what? Mama runs everything. The women run everything. So naturally, in our community, the woman is already placed at the highest 
pinnacle place and the men are usually placed down maybe due to incarceration maybe due to a lack of work ethic maybe due to being a poor mate or father or maybe just they just plain sorry i don't know but in our community our men don't want to grow up and part of wanting to grow up and be an adult is assuming responsibility a part of wanting to grow up and be a man is you want to leave a legacy so a part of being a man is saying i want to leave a legacy i want to make my community better I want to make my family better. I want to make my family name proud. I want to do something great. I want to change the world. I want to be who God made me to be. So all of those things are what a man should be telling himself. These are the things he should be telling himself every day to go out there and achieve. Our men don't say that. Our men want to look good. Our men want to get a bunch of women. Our men want to seem want to be the boss, but our men don't really want to leave a legacy. Our men don't really want to build a community up, and it's showing. Look at look at what the gangs have done. Look at what these artists do. Look at what the men do in our community when they get a leadership position. And then the ones that don't follow the script, we call them sellouts. We call them coons. Just look at the men that we praise. We praise Jay-Z. We praise him. We praise 50 Cent. We, we, praise, we praise all these people who are literally puppets for the Jewish community. We praise them. We praise all the people that are puppets for white America, liberal white America, I might add. Puppets in the industry. These men that we praise and adore, they ain't calling no shots. These athletes, LeBron ain't calling no shots. <clears throat> now, Heather said that welfare push the fathers out the home let me tell you something if you a real man how in the world could a government program get you out the house if you a real man how in the world can a government program get you out the house when you got your children there let's just be honest we didn't fight hard enough let's be honest we didn't put up enough of a fight Let's be honest, we didn't want to smoke. Ain't no way in the world somebody gonna separate me from my children and I don't even have any children. I remember when I used to work with children and I dare somebody try to do something to them children and say I couldn't do something. So we didn't fight hard enough. So I don't want no more excuses about no welfare, none of that stuff, them all excuses. Cause now we ain't doing it. Now, when there's no system in place to get us out the house, we still, we still aren't in the house. So I don't want no excuses. These men are weak and it's disgusting. The men are weak, period. This man sitting up here talking about the NFL is racist, but you was a head coach for three years on the blackest staff in the NFL, the Miami Dolphins. Maybe you did a poor job. Maybe you didn't establish a culture or maybe deep down inside, you felt like you didn't really deserve to be there because most of the men in our community suffer from arrested development because they don't feel good about themselves. They got low self-esteem. They listen to these Democrats and these woke black folks their whole life telling them that they was oppressed. If they tell you that you're oppressed, that's going to create low self-esteem low self-esteem you waking up every day and these folks is telling you these folks is telling you that you weaker than another group of men they tell you them, them the asian people don't believe that the hispanics don't believe that no other race believes that except us when them folks come to this country they got one goal in mind and that's to get it we run around right here crying, weak. Every day we complaining about something. Man, I lost my job because I didn't want to get the jab. Did I cry about it? Did I say my job was did I say my job was wrong? Did I curse the people there? Did I curse every did I say they was racist? No. I didn't complain at all. I didn't complain at all. Yeah, guess, you know why I saw women in here? Because I realized something. 
the Bible says that the woman is the man's wisdom. So that means when the women are listening, when the women are listening, that means it's some character being displayed. When the women are listening, that means there's some character being displayed. The woman is the physical manifestation of a man's wisdom. So yeah, it'd be all women in here because I'm telling the truth. These men are weak and they're sensitive and they're cowards and they're afraid. These, I, I done heard so many black men, we in Black History Month, I done heard so many black men tell me what they can't do because of what some white person is not going to let them do. I'm like, who raised y'all? My, my bad, my bad, Jay, Jay Will. We didn't mean to exclude you. My bad, Jay Will. <laughs> my bad. There may be some men in here, but y'all get my point. But y'all get my point. Thank you, Navi. But y'all get my point. These men are weak. They, I, I, I've heard more Black men tell me what they couldn't do based on a hypothetical situation. Based on a hypothetical situation of what somebody white might do. So most of us are already defeated before we leave the house. So I listened to Brian Flores talking and he talking about a, a, a text message that Bill Belichick tweeted. Bill Belichick had you on his staff for 15 years, you won four Super Bowls with the Patriots. You was on the staff for 15 years, and then you, you got he got you the head coaching job with the Miami Dolphins, and you threw him under the bus. You snitched. You snitched on the owner. I listen, you ain't gotta throw the games, but you can't go snitch though. It ain't it ain't honorable. What that man told you was in private. That's the problem. That's why ain't no black coaches. Because y'all too sensitive and emotional. That's why ain't no black coaches. Because y'all weak and y'all are soft. That's why. Not to mention, you got a thousand white people applying for the job to be head coaches. And you may have 20 black coaches. So the numbers ain't going to never look right. Because quiet is kept. We don't try to be head coaches in the NFL because we believe the NFL is racist even though we won't boycott it and we won't leave. Kaepernick said the NFL is like slavery but he still wants to play in the NFL. I told you, they weak. They soft. They're weak and soft. What kind of double-minded man says the NFL is like slavery but I still want to play in it and we follow him? It's disgusting. That's the problem with the black community, it's the men. It's the men. Because when the men get a position of power, this is what they do. They give y'all a poor example. They sell the women out, they sell the children out, and they sell the community out. You sitting there snitching on the owner. Snitching. That's why there can't be no black hair coaches. Because y'all too emotional. And you can't keep your mouth shut. That's why. It can't be any black hair coaches. Because this is what y'all do. On the blackest staff in the NFL, you holler racism. That's why there can't be no black coaches. Because y'all don't have any honor. That's why. And everybody knows it. That y'all can be bought and sold very easily. All y'all can be bought and sold. Look at every movement we ever had. They all got compromised from the inside. And it was us selling us out. It wasn't the women. It was us. It was back in them days, the women was following the men. It was us. Them women looked and said, these men ain't about nothing. These men in here got a whole wife, but then sleeping with this one and that one ain't no honor. There's no woman that's going to respect you as a man if you're sleeping around. She's not going to respect you because you don't have any discipline. And nobody respects anybody without discipline. No one respects an undisciplined person. Matter of fact, we only respect people that are disciplined. We only respect the people that are disciplined. So no, so these men in these organizations all was whoremongers, sleeping around, and half of them was down low. 
ain't no women finna follow that. That's what made them, that's what made feminism so appealing to our women because the men were so sorry and trifling. That's what made it so appealing because the women was like, if I'm going to submit to this, I'm, I'd rather go on my own. I don't blame y'all. It's disgusting. I'm watching these men now. I'm watching these folks tell me the NFL is like slavery. So that would mean that the that Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, Mary J. Blige, and then 50 Cent hanging like a strange fruit coming out the roof was a minstrel show. And then you got Eminem capping it off with a kneel. Still got the white man above you. They, st they let Eminem steal the show with a fake kneel. Still. I don't have any sympathy for any of it. It's disgusting. And that's the problem. Talking about the NFL is racist and the majority of the players are black. All them black coaches, all them black players, all them black trainers, all them black folks in the office, and the NFL is racist. NFL might be the most diverse company in the world. Oh, but y'all want to see some black owners and head coaches. You know why? Because y'all just want to be seen. Y'all don't care about the data, statistics. Y'all just want to be seen. Y'all just want to be seen. I hope this live is still going. <clears throat> I hope this live is still going. But that's the issue. The issue ain't these white people. The issue is weak men. How... We got Emmett Till. Are y'all still on here? I don't see any comments. Let me know if y'all still on here. Let me know. We go to Emmett Till. Are y'all still on? Can somebody give me a thumbs up? Maybe y'all not on. If y'all still on, let me know. Because I may have to restart the video. Are y'all still on? Can somebody tell me something? Just give me a thumbs up so I have to keep talking. Because this next because this next part about to be a trigger part. All right, I, don't, I don't see any comments, so I'm going to go ahead and cut it off. I'm going to start.